to legend, the story of tea began in China 4,700 years ago. An old philosopher, Shen Nung, was boiling water for his evening meal. For firewood, he used branches of a bush called cha. Some leaves fell into the boiling water, and a pleasing fragrance drifted from the pot. The old man tasted the brew and rejoiced at his discovery. The preparation and drinking of cha became part of the ceremony of daily life. An early Chinese recipe for brewing cha instructed one to boil for as many minutes as it takes a crayfish to turn red, pour the boiling water over the leaves and let it remain until the vapor melts into a thin mist which floats upon the surface. Drink the precious liquid at your leisure and thus drive away all causes of sorrow. It was many hundreds of years before tea was tasted in the West. Discovered in Java, it was introduced into Europe by Dutch seafarers early in the 17th century. Being prosperous, the Dutch took a great interest in food and drink. From Holland, tea spread to England, where in the 1650s, Oliver Cromwell is unreliably reported to have held tea parties. In 1660, Queen Catherine, the wife of Charles II, received a precious gift. It was tea, a gift fit for a queen. Tea was first served in many ways. In bulk, it was drawn like beer, or the leaves were boiled and served with butter and seasoning as a vegetable. But however it was served, the high cost of tea set it beyond the reach of the ordinary public. And the more it became the fashionable drink of the upper classes, the more heavily it was taxed by the crown. And the more it was taxed, the more determined were the English people to make it their national drink. The result? Smuggling. So fashionable did smuggling become, that by the middle of the 18th century, it accounted for over half the tea consumed in England. Thus was it possible for Dr. Johnson to fill his famous quart mug. And thus did the English become a tea-drinking nation. The taste for the cups that cheer but not inebriate accompanied the colonists to the New World. And so did the duty on tea imposed by George III, which made it rather hard for the tax collector and resulted in something known as the Boston Tea Party. A festive occasion on which 10,000 pounds worth of tea was dumped into the harbor as a prelude to the American Revolution. In the 19th century, the design of sailing ships reached its highest development in the beautiful tea clippers of the 1860s. The clipper was a functional and efficient machine designed for speed, as the first cargoes to arrive at the London tea auctions would get the highest prices. But the clippers ruled the sea for only 15 years. The age of steam was coming, and all sailing ships were doomed to disappear. During the centuries since its discovery, tea has spread through the Orient. In our time, it has been grown in China, Japan, Formosa, Pakistan, India, Ceylon, Java, and has most recently been transplanted to East Africa. Most of our tea comes from India and Ceylon.
tea gardens of Ceylon are spread high up the sides of the mountains. This is where some of the finest teas in the world are grown. For here, the plants are washed by torrential rains, swept by monsoon winds, warmed by the brilliant sunshine, and touched by frost at night. Tea plucking is women's work. Quickly and deftly, they pluck only the newest growth, two leaves in the bud from the new shoots. Now the long journey begins. The tea leaves are carried down the sloping sides of the mountains on their way to the factory. When the fresh green tea arrives here, the leaves are first withered, then rolled and left to oxidize or ferment for a while before being dried with blasts of hot air. Then, having shrunk to one quarter of its original size, the finished black tea goes into wooden chests, snugly lined with metal foil for protection at sea. After a 12,000-mile voyage, the chests of tea arrive in Canada. When the tea arrives at this modern Canadian factory, it still has before it the important phase of blending and packaging. First, the chests are weighed. Then samples are taken from the chests. These go to the tea taster, who is an expert trained to distinguish the subtle characteristics of the teas from the different gardens. He makes up a cup of tea from each sample. After the tea has infused for five minutes, the expert examines the color of the liquid in each cup. He carefully smells the leaves and notes their size and color, and compares all these features with those of the teas he uses as his standards for comparison. Now he tastes the infusion, rolling it against his palate to find the subtlest shades of its flavor. He records the grading of each sample in code and selects the blend from among the code marks. The finished blend may contain teas from 20 to 30 different gardens. <laughs> These are blended in great quantities in large rotating drums. Large glass storage tanks contain the tea as it works its way slowly down toward the packaging machine. Today, half the tea drinkers in Canada buy their tea in tea bags. 
Each one of these machines packs at the rate of 300 bags a minute. The tea bag paper is folded into a continuous sleeve. The tea is accurately weighed out at high speed and drops down to the tea bags just as the knife separates them. The machine drops the tea bags in batches of five for easy handling. Sample tea bags are constantly weighed to check the accuracy of the machines. Variations rarely exceed two or three seven thousandths of a pound. But all this is not enough to guarantee a really good cup of tea. So far we have only the ingredients. A good cup of tea must be properly made. First, warm the pot with boiling water. Next, use one tea bag for every two cups. Then pour the water over the tea bags. The water must be boiling and it should have come from the cold tap. The tea must be left to steep for five minutes. Then stir lightly and it's ready to serve. This is the recipe for making delicious tea, that sovereign drink of pleasure and health as developed through the centuries. Centuries which saw some strange experiments. The samovars, urns and pots which mark this journey through the ages tell but a fragment of the story. For though we buy our tea in a package, its story is older than history.